A Courtship Guide Chapter 1 A Courtship Essay Guide 1 The Mating Game 1 Would you date yourself? Falling in love can be strange and quick. Both men and women get dizzy when it comes to this phenomena. I think it's got something to do with being alone. So many people are so starved for love that when they get a whiff from anybody, they go for it, head over heels. It's got a magical feeling to it that's actually tied into the release of euphoric hormones in your brain like phenylethylamine, P, and oxytocin. I've watched a number of couples on TV documentaries go through the falling in love process and it hits people in one of two ways. Like a head-on collision out of the blue. You become friends then fall in love. Most loves start off in either a working situation, at school, living in the same apartment building, etc. They get to know each other, not seriously attracted but as friends then over time, they get to feel comfortable together so they take it up a notch or usually one is aggressive and snares the other. A lot of people get together after a friendship situation then don't see each other for a year or several years, bump into each other again and the situation is now changed, they feel comfortable with each other because they know each other from the past plus the fact that they're now lonely, they don't have the free, fun social network they had before when they were younger and carefree so they start out there. I generally don't like this approach much because I live more at a primal level. I believe that God built in a detector in my soul so I can usually spot a kindred spirit slash soulmate right off and everybody else is less than that. It's not the just the physical beauty of the other person, it's the essence I feel in their souls. Many people meet someone through friends so make friends wherever you are because they have friends who might be your future lover. Everybody who's looking for love has the sense and the instincts to change drastically when a prospect enters your view. You straighten up, clean up, wear nice clothes for the next time you will see her, you smile, appear easygoing, brush your teeth and try to make intelligent, easy breezy conversation. It's only natural to act a bit phony, play the game a bit, put your best foot forward in your attempts to impress the sweetie pie and sweep her off her feet. It's okay. Everybody does it. Just remember that when the lights of the starry eyes fade, you will wake up one morning to see an ordinary person with maybe bad breath who's a bit of a slob who drinks coffee, leaves their smelly socks laying around and lays around before he or she feels like getting out of bed. This isn't bad. It's just reality. Realize that everybody is pretty well the same beneath the glamour and the armour. We're all ordinary people doing ordinary things to get through life. No matter how dignified we appear in public, we all do the usual undignified things so we're all human. You don't fool me and I won't try to fool you. True love is cuddling during all those ordinary, routine times like when you wake up in the morning and it's not necessarily like the great whammo romantic date the night before. For me, even if I'm totally smitten by someone and feel a great connection of the soul, I feel as though you have to spend time doing ordinary things together to see life as lived day by day with this person. A silent patience and acceptance of life as is are qualities all truly good people have. Other people are too impatient therefore not good life partner material. They want it all, they want it now. It's never good enough. They're always ambitious for more material things and have no qualms about belittling waiters and other service personnel while someone enlightened who accepts life knows that anything is too trivial to bother some waiter about it. After all, it's just a meal. The thing I like is a vacation or a trip in close quarters like either a long drive in a car and slash or something like camping out either in a tent or an RV. This is how you really get to know somebody, not by going on an expensive vacation and staying at a hotel but by sleeping in a tent or a van together. That's my test to see somebody as they really are with the mundanity of day-to-day -day life. The basic golden rule in the search for love is to be ready to go through bad dates and failed relationships in your quest before you make it. The way to avoid this is to wait until you find the real thing. You will be rejected when you ask people out, you will see the initial attraction of getting a first date fade when you actually go out with the person and you will see potential soulmates crumble via the day-to-day -day grind of life as they reveal their real selves to you. 
It's no secret that people put their best face forward when initially going out with somebody then as you get more familiar and the walls come down, their true selfish selves show. All kinds of people are phony charming up front only to reveal very ugly streaks later like anger, hate, inferiority, sadistic, worry, negative outlook, money-oriented, criminal, drug addict, alcoholic, etc. So unless you're very lucky, you will have to dance with a few frogs before you find your prince slash princess. Learn as you go along. Narrow your focus to exactly who you want. If it's just lukewarm, forget it unless you think you can settle for it. Many people settle for a lukewarm suitor instead of waiting for the right one which is alright if you're willing to work hard at it or be ready to be disappointed later on down the line. Overcome the fear of getting out there and circulating and then being able to make the move when you see him or her. This is probably the toughest of them all. Society has a way of frowning on people who go out to public events on their own. Your best tactic is to do something you really like anyway like join a gym, a martial arts dojo, a bowling league, etc. Find a same-sex friend who's looking for someone to go out with but barring that, the easiest way is probably just to get a job in a very public place like a college slash university, church, hotel, store, gym, restaurant, amusement park, theater, nightclub, county courthouse, bank, etc. Once you meet someone you like, don't fret over whether they really like you. Just forget all the trivial crap and doubts you feel and win her over by being a good, brave, unpretentious person all the time. Make a friend just like you would with a same-sex best friend. I see people play out this insecurity charade with a new boyfriend or girlfriend. They're so afraid of being rejected, whether the other person really likes them that they go to pieces worrying about it, testing the other person subtly and being an all-around, negative, pesky, tough person to be around. Just forget it all and live to make the best of any situation. Stay strong. You will fail when trying to meet somebody, fail after you meet them and the relationship fizzles then fail again after you get married and head for divorce court. All kinds of people go through 3, 4 or 5 divorces before they find somebody compatible. They didn't give up. It doesn't matter how many times, it's never too late for love because beyond your basic needs like food and shelter, love is a strong need. I've seen love stories on TV where people in their 70s and 80s have found happiness in love for the first time so don't give up. No matter how old you are, take care of yourself so you will be ready. There are older, single, healthy people with good attitudes looking for someone who takes care of themselves and doesn't get depressed because they think they will never find anyone. Always carry yourself well. This doesn't necessarily mean clothes and makeup. The operative word is be nice but don't go overboard on the vanity bit. My idea of someone who carries themselves well is someone who looks peaceful with an easy, quiet, humble way about themselves. Don't give up on someone you really like after the, the first try. If you really like them, try three times. The reason for this is that many people are so unaccustomed to having people come on to them that when you do, they may be at a loss for words and give you what seems like a rebuff when in reality, they're just being nervous so you have to cool it and try again either a little later or at another time. For example, if you try to talk to someone and they give you a simple answer then turn away, try again, maybe wait a few minutes, days, or even months, keep looking over at them and give them another chance. Everybody gets nervous around a new, potential mate so just relax as best as you can. Once you find someone, be their emotional rock of Gibraltar. If you're a good listener who enjoys having someone spill their guts out to you and you're a good cuddler late at night who can talk about whatever your love wants to talk about, you can't miss especially if you're super gentle. This is the real key to any great love affair. Don't go overboard. If you like someone, make your intention clearly known, then step back and play it cool for a bit. Don't be too available or too agreeable because the other person might blow you off as either too easy or someone weak without a backbone. If they really like you, they will make the next moves. Each has to keep adding their positive moves onto the other's come on gestures. 
Don't smother them or cater to them like a buzzard. Give them the space to choose to come to you of their own free will. I'm not saying don't be nice, I'm just saying don't call them up every minute of the day or don't buy your new girlfriend an expensive gift after the first week. Give it time to develop naturally. Some people play the aloofness, hard to get game. Don't be phony. If you like someone, tell them, and show it. The mating game too. Maintain your dignity. Honor yourself. Be real. Don't fake it. Check out what kind of vibes you give off. Many men and women alike have been so beaten up in the game of love that they are truly contemptuous of the opposite sex and are ready to pounce on them and cut them to pieces in a heartbeat. If that's you, even on a subconscious level, you better work on yourself first for a bit before you go looking for love cause you're not ready. The biggest problem is self-consciousness but the truth is that most people are thinking about themselves not about you so get the guts to say hi to strangers you're attracted to. Shyness is simply fear of what others will think of you. If you focus on being happy and living a full life, you will project joy and confidence and make friends. Remember, everyone on the planet is a bit nervous in social situations meeting new people. Everybody acts phony and tries to be cool in some way. Be yourself, stay calm and people will like your realness and calmness. Everything comes down to how warm, open, and friendly your aura is. Be interesting but not arrogant, obnoxious, or a know-it-all intellectual. If you get a bite, ask for her phone number and if she hesitates, offer her yours. Quickly pull out your business card and give it to her with an invitation to call anytime for anything. Instead of a business card, have some keychains made up with your name and number on them. Pass them out at social functions. Many women live in some superficial fantasy land especially when they're with a few other girls giggling around. Men don't really like this glamorous facade. If girls could be a bit more real about life and not live in that phony gossipy TV tabloid type world, guys would generally approach them more. Be cool and relaxed in your own way not in that way where you're trying to imitate what's cool on TV or in a magazine. Don't giggle like a fool when a guy tries to talk to you. Give a calm, straight, competent answer. You can't really plan on finding love or orchestrate it. All the psychobabble books will tell you to be more assertive which is good, to say hi to someone you like, to dress a little better, go over near where someone you like is and stand there for a bit to see if they make a move which is all fine and good but where these psychobabble books deviate from me is that they tell you to make up a checklist and methodically pursue a plan which means to question all candidates as though you're shopping for a car which kills the romantic spirit and men aren't dumb, they can feel one of these phonies right away. The more joyous, slim, active, and beautiful you are as a single, the more people will come on to you. Everybody knows youthful spark and vitality when they see it. Most middle-aged people are frumpy but if you're tough and spiritual, you will work your body and soul to bring yourself up to a beautiful vibe for you as a person then when you've got that light springy feeling, don't just sit at home, go out to events where you will be around people and can meet them. This outgoing attitude is what you need, simply to put yourself out there so you can meet people. Don't even go out with the expectation of meeting somebody. Go out with the thought that you're you, you're pursuing your life your way. When you do this and follow interests inherent to you, you will be joyful then out of the blue you will come face to face with a worthy soulmate equal. Everybody says they want somebody real, not some phony manufactured clone. Don't wear too much jewelry or makeup. It makes you look manufactured. Finally, don't wear any rings that might be mistaken for a wedding ring. The mating game 3. Courtship consists in a number of quiet attentions, not so pointed as to alarm, nor so vague as to not be understood. This subtle approach which is flirting which can be taken either way as friendly banter or sexual suggestion works fine if you're working with someone or going to school with them but if you see someone out in public, you'd better make your move quickly and directly because you may not get another chance. Prepare yourself for love by living as a noble single trying to live a good life. Don't even think about the mating game. Just think of being a good person for you and while living a noble life, you should come in contact with interesting, 
interested people. Draw pictures or imagine your dream lover in your mind so you know the type of person you're attracted to. When one comes into view, your heart rate should shoot up immediately with a good kind of nervousness. Hopefully, you look sparkly enough about life that she's attracted to you. After I wrote this piece and read it over a few months later, I realized it was very analytical, almost like shopping for a mate when for me, it's a totally intuitive thing. First off, I know in one second whether I see potential or not. If I see someone that I'm really attracted to, provided I got some cash, a reasonable standard of living and want love which sometimes you don't, I'd go for it without fear of embarrassment, walking right up to her, telling her she was beautiful and seeing how she reacted. Of course, I wouldn't do it unless I intuitively knew she liked me and you can often tell that very quickly by her moves, her eye contact and her smile or absence of it directed at you. The general pattern of the mating game is. You look around, see someone you like. Get his or her attention through sexy body movements trying to look healthy and vital. Awkward first moves. Smile and look nice. Idle soft spoken talk about nothing in particular. Accidental touching which becomes more real and deliberate. Facing each other. Intense eye contact. Kiss, hug, etc. Consummation. Between first time look and consummation could take several years of flirting and a cat and mouse game of getting close backing off getting close over and over again. According to a TV show about the mating habits of humans and animals, the general characteristics of the mating game are. Be healthy. It means you have good genes which is what women want. This is often a subconscious urge. We don't realize we're looking for a worthy contender to pass our genes onto. Display yourself colorfully, uniquely by being creative and acting sensitively feminine even if you're a man like maybe being a pop star, an artist, a cool original dude or even a flamboyant wrestler. Display your status symbols, nice clothes, nice car, expensive watch, etc. Be the biggest toughest one in the bunch. Be the alpha male, the one with the power over others. Be young or at least act youthful. Win her over by being a supportive friend. Celebrate your differences both as man and woman and in personality. Be caring and sharing. Men should show their feminine side, women should show their masculine side. Women should try more for the physical pleasure of love, men should try more for the emotional pleasure. In a good relationship, both partners always intentionally try to love and care for each other and minimize anger or at least diffuse it when it happens. Love is a feeling of safety and comfort with one another. Show her a good time by taking her out and doing fun things with her. Appeal to her sense of romance. Show you're a practical breadwinner and handyman around the house. Smell nice. Smell different from the smell of her body, immune system, because women intuitively pick guys who smell different from themselves to mix up the gene pool. Own your own spread, a house with food in it and creature comforts which a girl would feel comfortable in raising her kids. Analyze your life and past relationships so you can clear out the cobwebs, make peace with yourself, know who you are and know what you want. Know what's in your subconscious mind so you can feel your way through life knowing what your true nature is and knowing who you're attracted to when you come across them. Balance your need to purge your natural energy to feel inspired with your need for love to feel connected deeply to someone in a loving way. Regardless of how corny it sounds, try to have a love affair with the world, with your life and the spirit of life itself because only then when you're in a positive state of mind without anything bothering you will you be in the mood to try for true love. You have to be relaxed and free such that you feel good about yourself as a worthy person with a job or some useful function in the world which gives you a good sense of identity and feeling of freedom such that you're ready for love, give off that vibe and quality people are attracted to you. Don't compete with others. Just try to be a good person within yourself and come to the conclusion that you want love and affection and are willing to give it to another person. Don't analyze yourself or your life too much. As stated elsewhere, I believe that all that psychobabble about wounded, 
inner child conflicts is the lie so-called mental health experts slash counselors used to keep sucking money out of you as you go back for endless sessions and suckered into their control. Your goal is to be happy, do whatever it takes to be happy and give off the vibe that you're happy. Only then will you find love not when you're brooding about your past and overanalyzing it. True strong intuitive love doesn't really happen all that much but when it does and you feel like you can handle it, go for it because it's rare. There are plenty of nice people around but very few soulmates. When you see it, you instinctively want to be with that person and make her happy. If two people are really attracted to each other, nothing else matters like all that crap about compatibility, upbringing, common experience, etc. It's like that song, I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've done as long as you love me. Anybody can make it if they try anybody, even the midget and the giant I saw on a talk show. If you want true happiness in love, you must follow your heart and not your head because love will win over practical concerns. If you get involved because you're attracted to someone's money or status, chances are it will never be a happy relationship. I don't know how many talk shows I've seen where two lovers had a torrid, passionate love affair only to split apart for whatever reason, jealous parents, the girl came from the wrong side of the tracks or whatever only to find that 20 years later, after a failed marriage, they're still thinking about each other. I knew a guy who was in love with a stripper but everyone pushed him away from her so he married a respectable teacher then one night he got drunk and spilled his guts out to me about how much he hated his life and still loved the stripper. Follow your heart. If you know you're with a decent person and not a con artist, never follow your head or what others tell you. If it feels right, stick with them regardless of whether they were a porno star or a bank robber in a past existence. Your gut instinct is always the most important thing in the courtship dance unless you're a naive schmuck who doesn't quite understand the reality of life yet and you're still in that dreamy puppy love stage of being in love with the idea of love. The mating game 4. Would you date yourself? Choose your love and love your choice. Flirting is being romantic without serious intent more than a glance, less than a stare. In the dating world, the guy is supposed to do all the work and take the rejection. The girl has to do the work in advance to get noticed. This means makeup and clothes. Right now, the success rate of aggressive girls is about 50% firstly because some guys don't expect it so they're caught off guard, secondly, some guys are old-fashioned and thirdly, some guys are scared off. If you're looking for a guy, dress as well as you can and smile a lot. If you know a shy guy well that you like, ask him out. The key to getting dates in the real world is working at it. Go out of your way, ask guys out, take their phone numbers, call them, deal with the rejection, go on dates, go on more dates, be open, etc. The search for Mr. or Ms. Wright should be the most important hunt of your life. Right off the bat the cliches say, compatibility, commitment and hard work make it a go. But what is compatibility? I believe most of us want a soulmate, an opposite sex version of ourselves. Take a look at your new partner. Ask yourself if he or she were your same gender, could you be good friends? It's a spiritual, intuitive type thing. For many men, you have to get that restless spirit, wild oats thing or whatever you want to call it, out of your system first and get lonely a few times before you're really ready for love. Some so-called experts say you should sit down and make a love map, John Money, Love Maps, 1986, a kind of shopping list of the person you're looking for, decide on how to find that person, become like that person then go search for her. I don't buy it. You can't hurry love or orchestrate it. To be real, it's just gotta happen so chuck out all the formulas and focus on just the one sure thing, take care of yourself, develop yourself so that you will be the fascinating, cool person she's looking for when you finally see each other. Rumi, the 12th century Muslim philosopher said your soulmate is already out there with your name written on her forehead. You just have to be ready and worthy enough by developing yourself so that the moment you see each other you know your soulmates. Men and women take one look at somebody, 
read their souls within three seconds and know immediately if there's potential there. In fact, a true soul connection takes only one millisecond, just one look and a lightning bolt shoots straight to your heart and it's all that matters. It happened to me a few times in my life. It's real, it really happens like that. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the old saying, love lies buried in the soul until awakened by an object worthy of desire. In a nutshell, the basic steps of the mating dance are. Look and smile, nod. Your pupils automatically dilate. Uncross your arms, open your body. Don't be manipulative, just be straight and open. Don't overdo it, do enough to convey your intent. Do things like flip your hair, relax your face. If there's an attraction, you will start to face each other. Eye contact goes longer. Loving gazes. Make gestures towards each other. Self-caress, skirt hike, tapping yourself, parade around. Give short, darting glances. Facial expressions are animated. Use hand movements while talking, try to highlight your sexy assets by adjusting your skirt, flipping your hair, jutting your breasts out. Move around, it attracts attention, reach out and touch him physically, speak in a soft voice. Do movement synchronization, imitate slash mirror each other. Mutual reciprocity is when he does something nice for you or moves in closer, you do the same. Try a quick kiss when you feel it's right. The Mating Game 5 Almost everybody plays by two rules when searching for a mate. Physical Attraction Similarity People go for opposite sex versions of themselves on all variables like age, outlook in life, physical health, intelligence, talents, gifts, skin color, education, social status, upbringing, religion, etc. Of course, there are exceptions but a major survey bared it out that we always go for someone like ourselves. It's that simple. The third factor is that some people say they want someone that challenges them. I'm kind of ambivalent on this one. One time, I was with a girl who I thought I loved and wanted to be with. She was out of my league as far as demanding a certain standard of material status whereas I'm really a guy who doesn't care much about material things so it was doomed to fail. She was a nice person but I always had to be on when I was with her, speaking good English, being proper, etc. And the problem with that is that I want peace, I don't really want anyone to challenge me, especially in my haven, my home. Sure I want good conversation but I want to be free enough to be myself and if that means wearing old shorts around the house and swearing if I feel like it, so be it. I don't want a girl that tries to tame me into a buffoon. I don't need anyone to challenge me because I challenge myself in my own life. All I want out of romantic love is a soft friend, nothing else. I don't care if she's got a grade 5 education as long as she has a warm heart. I don't care about talking all that much except to cuddle for a few minutes at night. Fourthly is an unconscious search to find someone who will make you feel safe and secure, kind of like going back home to childhood, the mother-slash-father complex. For me, the key is to find someone that makes me feel really good when I'm around her because there's something so special and beautiful about her. Beyond that, you're limited by where you live and who you associate with, i.e., where you work and who your friends and family are. Very roughly, about 50% of couples meet through friends and family, 25% through work and school and 25% in other ways like self-introductions. Less than 2% meet through personal ads. Try the old corny routine of imagery. Imagine in your mind what type of person you like. I'm not talking beauty queen here, I'm talking what do you picture yourself doing, walking in the park with a quiet, librarian type, going out for a hike with your beau or going to church together. These are realistic things you should search within your soul for what you want in a soulmate. Some people suggest that you should write all this out as an exercise but I wonder if that's really going a little too far since, after all, love is an art not a science. You can't make a shopping list to create the parts you want your dream mate to be. 
create a generalized mythical mate profile in your mind, just a general thing to think about. Chances are when you meet him or her, they won't be like your mental picture but that shouldn't matter. If a guy likes you, he will bring things over for you like a box of donuts, a hammer, a picture, etc. He will do things like fix your car, paint the patio, etc. Signals to know he likes you or if he takes out the garbage, mows the lawn without being asked to, smiles when he's around you, talks about future plans together, tries to be nice to your parents and proudly introduces you to all his gang including his family. If he does these things, he loves you but never proclaim your love too early for him because if you do, he might think you're too easy, a dependent flake. If you're serious, you have to talk about things that really matter. Take him to quiet places like the ocean shore at sunset or for a hike in the woods to a scenic view on a hill where it's just the two of you and the mood is right for a nice, natural deep talk about life. Go for a picnic. Fire at night looking up at the stars will create the atmosphere. Don't get taken in by the superficials, i.e. good looks or money. Many people go for the showpiece trophy, someone good looking even though there may be no compatibility on the inside. Many of these relationships are doomed to be short term. If the average guy wants his beautiful trophy wife, he's gotta appease her with money then once he's tapped out, it ends up in divorce anyway. Courtship books are located at hashtag 306.7, hashtag 646.76-78 and HQ801 at the library. The Mating Game 6 Virtually all the religious movements and conservative social institutions of the world want people to get married young and not overanalyze it too much. They say do it and learn to love each other as you go along which flies in the face of our modern western view where we want fun and freedom in our 20s and experiment until we find the right one. I've read a lot of conservative literature that says don't waste time on the courtship process. Find someone, make the move and do it then learn to love them as you go along. This was the prevailing view right up until the 1980s. People found someone at a very young age or somebody found someone for them, the traditional arranged marriage, got married then got to know each other after. I don't necessarily buy this because marriage is such a serious commitment I believe you should proceed somewhat slowly even if she is your soulmate. Most people are nervous and scared about going out and meeting someone new. The best way to take it is to go with the flow and accept what comes. Don't go out thinking you either have to hit a grand slam or thinking that your entire life rests on making some person fall in love with you. Play it cool. Most dates only go one time so if it wasn't meant to be, don't sweat it. You might have high expectations and all kinds of other emotional baggage that somehow prevents you from connecting. You're in a meat market and others see you as a piece of flesh for your potential tastiness as a mate so take it all in stride. You meet someone nice or at least you think you do. It all changes. Or does it? You're still anxious and nervous and afraid of rejection. They're thinking the same about you. It fizzles, you take it personally and set out on a self-hurt cycle of pain, anger, blaming everybody and feeling inadequate in love. You build up a whole drama in your mind and beat yourself up. Or, if you're one of the lucky ones, you don't take it personally. You just accept it as a mismatch and move on. That way, you will save yourself the grief of it all. Courtships can be divided into several stages. You find someone. You date. The man chases the woman and gets her. Too close, the guy thinks twice about it and backs off a bit. The woman comes on strong, showing her feminine, vulnerable, sexy qualities. The man can't resist. They decide to move it up a notch. Lovey-dovey for a while. First fight. Feel lonely and lost without you. Let's get married. That's the general gist of it. The biggest thing is probably the dichotomy of love which has the fear element to it, that of fear of intimacy slash commitment. Men want love but they want freedom too. In fact, many courtships don't start off very strong, rather they start off as a game of ambivalence. There's no great rush of fireworks there, 
just a possibility that the person's not bad and might work out so we date to explore usually from a practical point of view. It becomes an emotional tug of war, a power play so to speak. He wants sex, she wants commitment, each wants something and neither seems to want to share honestly with each other. At one end, there's the highly romantic view that loves a magical, spontaneous thing and when it happens, everything else will take care of itself. At the other end, we have the cynical view that a relationship is a practical agreement and love's got nothing to do with it. The reality is somewhere in between. The man might just be on an ego trip of conquest that he's gleaned from all the such inclined movies that tell him he has to pursue the girl and seduce her. And then when he gets her, he will probably get cold feet and back off a bit, uncertain about where to go from there. All men are caught between love and freedom. They might work their way through some sexual anxiety and connect in bed. Then, over time, they will test each other out. Some things might change the relationship drastically, for instance, the mother or girlfriend might push the girl to get this guy or suddenly another girl wants him to. They might get closer and each change a little to accommodate the other. At this stage, the relationship could go on for years in a haze of mixed signals, half-hearted uncertainty. They could fight, break up and get back together several times. In the end, the practical concerns of mutual readiness have a lot to do with how the relationship plays itself out. If there's some love there and they're both mutually ready, they might have a good go at it. Many people disregard the need to be mutually ready and their relationships fail. The Mating Game 7 Don't listen to what anyone says. Listen to the voice in your head. If it says this is the right one, stick with it. Every attractive girl knows every man she meets wants to fuck her. You're out there to have a good time playing around, exploring life, getting to know someone in order to find one that fits you. Once you find a woman who fits what you are looking for, continue the relationship as a mix of being playful and easygoing while adding romance and intimacy into it. You can't be looking to score or overly romantic. It has to be easygoing fun. In today's cold, hard world, things like job and money play a lot on the success of a relationship. We want to love and be loved but we also have to be in a position to provide a sanctuary where love can grow and flourish without worry of outside constraints all the time like paying bills. Something like the need to keep a roof over your head can destroy the potential for romance very quickly. Some people never fall in love because they're always on the verge of bankruptcy or poverty. Note this classical dilemma in the courtship game. Women want romance all the time but a man sees it as a task, a mission to charm the woman and win her over so that then he can go back to being the comfortable, old shoe that he really is. When a man stops romancing his woman, you might consider feeling flattered that he now thinks you're his. It doesn't necessarily mean that he loves you less, it could just mean that he's got you and he's just taking it easy now that the mission has been accomplished. Society gives us a push to get married after the age of 23. Many of us feel the biological imperative and get lonely for a companion but the bottom line through it all is that for a relationship to succeed, you need love and that sense of mutual readiness between the two lovebirds and that means that love alone is not enough. Two people should have a certain amount of achievement and direction in their own lives before they can commit to a relationship which takes on a life of its own, although, of course, there are exceptions which work out fine, for example, a man rescues a naive, country girl from her limited life and she flourishes in her new role as a housewife or some ex-convict is bumming around and all of a sudden some Christian girl gives him some encouragement and the next thing you know he's holding down. A steady job, married having a kid and really happy about it. This happened to a guy I knew, an easygoing, unambitious guy then he meet some girl and became a happy, corny domesticated clone real quick, within less than a year and they're still together so I don't necessarily buy into all the conventional psychological jargon about a healthy relationship requiring two psychologically healthy individuals with their own distinct identities and directions in life. Anybody can fall in love at any time. Watch out for poison relationships, in essence, people who are angry or jealous. There are also professional victims out there, 
people who subconsciously seek out mates who will abuse them or that are messed up and need to be mothered. If it gets too deep and complicated and guilt-ridden, stay away. Bottom line, people have a strange quirk with relationships. Most of us would rather be with someone than be alone so even if we don't like them all that much, we still develop an attachment to this other person. It may not be love but at least there's someone there, so my point is don't rush into it. Take heat at the beginning. Go slower, analyze it. Timing is everything. If it's going lousy or humdrum, get out now before you get in too deep. Don't ever expect to change anybody. You have to take a long, cold, practical look at your partner and decide whether they will fit your view of a lifelong mate. Some people may live in a fantasy and wait until after marriage to discover the reality of the situation. You may have some fights and otherwise not really feel connected to this person. You see the negative traits, anger, frustration, anxiety, etc. You have to cut through the fantasy to decide if a lifelong relationship is practically viable. Unfortunately, many people are too self-centered to realize that they have to give of themselves and often resort to infantile things like nagging and criticizing to get what they want. In the end, you negotiate within yourself and with your partner whether the relationship goes on. Each adjusts accordingly and decides about the feasibility of moving on to the final commitment of marriage. Intimate relations are an alive, evolving process of interaction between two people. It doesn't just happen when the right one comes along. Mutual discovery and sharing take time. Intimacy grows through the nourishing experiences two people share, every experience bringing them closer and stronger together. Truly intimate people can sense each other almost psychically and don't need words to express their feelings. Eye contact is enough. True love is accepting one another's differences, not necessarily striving for mergence into one entity, there always has to be a sense of individual personality. Don't expect your beau to solve all your personal problems and take care of you. If you feel like a loser before you meet him, chances are he won't change your internal feelings all that much. He might give you opportunities but ultimately, you're responsible for your own life and your own happiness. Don't stay with a dud and hope he will get better. Don't get hooked on a suave, cool-looking guy with a ponytail and gloss over the fact that he's really a loser living in a fantasy world from the 1980s. Don't confuse lust with love. Sex is not love. Real love means making love. The best date is when you do something as opposed to sitting in a restaurant because it stimulates you in a holistic way. If you're not the restaurant type, don't go there on a date or just go to a fast food joint. Stand as she enters the room, help her on with her coat, hold the door for her and tip people who usually get tips. If your date does something embarrassing but not evil intentioned, ignore it. Don't try to act like you're uppity or upper class. Present yourself as who you really are. If you're overdressed and big on jewelry, some men think it's too frivolous. In love, birds of a feather flock together. Opposites attract sometimes but not often. If you're interested in someone, do what you must to make them think you're alike. When you talk to this person, pick up on their unique speaking words, cliches, and patterns and use them. Salespeople always act like they think their customer is. You're selling yourself to a potential lover. Imitate him in what he likes to do, life philosophy and his ideas on love and family. Studies show that marriages between people from similar backgrounds last longer than people who marry into a different socioeconomic class. Imitate your target in the way he moves, walks, gestures, etc. If there's a story on the news and he makes a comment, act like you agree. If he's a republication or anti-abortion, if you really want to be with him, you have to agree. Determine where your target is on the intimacy-independent continuum then play it at that level. Whatever you do, don't start analyzing or psychobabalizing to your target in his face. Every man and woman hates that. Don't ask about where you stand with him. If he loves you, he will let you know. If he doesn't make a serious commitment after a year, tell him you want to get married to someone. If he's not interested, 
tell him to tell you so that you can move on. Empathize. Feel his or her pain when they tell you something sad about themselves. If you're a guy, be handy in practical home matters. If you're a woman, be a good cook. Everybody wants to be recognized as special. Make your target feel special. Compliments are good only if sincere and sparingly used. Compliment something that the person values as their self-image. Tell a girl she's beautiful and a guy he's strong. If you get a compliment, give it right back by saying thanks, you're pretty hot yourself. Be careful though. Some people see compliments as a low-level attempt to be manipulated. If somebody compliments me, it means the same thing as when someone puts me down, absolutely nothing. I'm immune to everything but my own inner standard. If you meet someone like this and you like them, don't bullshit them. Look at, make eye contact and subtly touch your partner as often as possible. Treat this person like you think they're a superstar. Find out where their vanity is then massage it. The more you open up, the more your lover loves you. When your lover tells you something like I got a big test today, ask him or her about it later. Don't tease your target lover, even if you think it's good-natured fun. Laugh at his or her jokes. When your quarry compliments you or asks you about anything you enjoy talking about, boomerang the good feelings back. Say nice things. Go easy on criticism. Show your target subtly how you can benefit or help him. Each person brings something into the relationship, either good looks, money, status, a smart intellect, a great personality, warmth, or kindness. If one is superior to the other as a human being over these factors, he or she may get arrogant while the other gets insecure. If something happens after marriage like the husband makes a lot of money at work or the wife gains 40 pounds, this changes the equity in the relationship. Try to be like the archetype of the ideal man or woman. When you go out, act happy, fun-loving and self-assured. If you want to attract a certain kind of person, dress and talk like that type of person, go where these type of people are. There's a silent scorecard. One side mustn't get too far ahead of the other. Each has to do good things for the other to keep it roughly equal. Don't be Jekyll and Hyde. If you act all nice for six months then one day explode in a fit of anger, that's enough to get you booted. Smoking or drinking excessively are deal breakers for some people. Be sensitive, sensual, and sensible. Be a good conversationalist. Know how to talk about the usual stuff you see on mainstream TV as well as about your own inner feelings, dreams, and ideas. Women want to talk about their problems and weaknesses. Men don't. Don't talk too much. Silence is good sometimes. Men want respect. Women want love. Don't be a know-it-all. Don't offer unsolicited advice. Don't correct people unless it could threaten their life. Stereotypes abound, the woman trying to domesticate the man and the men resisting with infantile macho gestures. Instead of pretending, get real and talk it out. Everybody wants their mate to be a friend as well as a lover. Be nice to her friends and family. Drop the critics immediately. They're usually messed up people. Beware of the person looking for someone to transition between one relationship to the next. They're just using you. If visiting his parents, dress conservatively. Leave your skeletons in your closet. Some things are better left unsaid. If you made a few porn movies or went to jail in the past, you don't have to tell your new beau. Beware the person looking for a mate just to go to social functions with. Beware of someone who gives out the message, I want someone to take care of me. They are most certainly insecure, lazy, and slash or lost beneath that superficial, glossy veneer. Real people want to do for themselves. Don't decide too quickly on a mate and then blindly try to make it work. Look for love for all the right reasons, to have a healthy relationship with someone. When you go to meet her mother, bring her some potted flowers. Falling in love is easy, staying in love is hard. Accept the journey that must continually be nourished by mutual experience. 
love is a vast canvas waiting for expression. Paint, explore, and create it in your own way, being unafraid to push the envelope. Don't be a drama queen in love with the idea of being in love. Sexual chemistry is a good feeling but it's not necessarily love. The mating game 8. A bad marriage is worse than being single and feeling lonely. The worst thing you could do as a single on the prowl is to be desperate or act desperate. Never, ever show a potential mate that you're desperate or never pursue somebody like a desperado. If you show a potential mate you're desperate, he either rejects you because you have no self-respect and inner strength or he feels he can control you and abuse you. You should never chase somebody down who you love more than he loves you because it will never be a good love affair plus the fact that true love never comes from a desperate chase. It should be mutual. You both know you like each other and try to develop a relationship. You give anyone up to three opportunities to make a move on you, to reciprocate after you make yourself available, and after that, forget it. It will minimize your heartache. Some good-looking, seemingly well-adjusted people will not respond to you even if you're good-looking and well-adjusted too. It's the way life works. Not everybody is looking for love. People have other problems and issues. Give it an honest effort but cut it off at a prudent stage. Don't become so highly focused on finding a mate that you lose all sense of freedom, personal space, timing, and the natural slow rhythm that relationships often develop at. Let things unfold naturally. If it's true love, it will happen in due time. In our society, men are brought up to be hunters and chasers. We are told that no means just be more persistent. This could get you a stalking or harassment charge. Don't continue to chase after people who say no. Love succeeds best when it just happens without much effort. The harder you try, the more likely that the object of your affection doesn't love you. The real thing should be easy, an effortless mutual kind of like between two people. If someone seems reluctant but you win them over by wearing them down with excessive persteering, presents, etc., it means you're not soulmates. You will be divorced within 10 years. True love should not be a hard sell. I read the courtship story of movie actors Bruce Willis and Demi Moore somewhere. He's not exactly tall, dark, and handsome but he was smitten by her, pestered her all to hell with gifts and attention so she thought anyone this persistent must love her and they married then divorced. Don't do it this way. It doesn't matter how good the guy treats you. If you don't feel love within your heart in a pure way, don't go along with it just because he's a nice guy even though you don't love him. Be strong enough to wait until you come across someone that you know intuitively could be the one and he or she feels the same about you. Having lots of money, flaunting it and buying expensive gifts will net you lots of fair-weather lovers but it is not the path to true love. In fact, go easy on the gifts. You create a tough situation if you give a girl who doesn't really love you expensive gifts. She's only human, she wants the gifts but at the same time, you or any guy will feel that by her taking the gifts, she's proclaiming her love for you but she isn't. I've seen some of them TV court shows where a guy buys the girl a car because he thinks she loves him and expects to marry her someday but then she breaks up and the guy lies through his teeth saying it wasn't a gift but a loan since he can't afford to buy cars for his friends. If you give a gift and the girl breaks up with you, you lose all rights to getting it back because it was a gift. It doesn't matter if it was a car, a house, or a diamond necklace. Engagement rings are different. Protocol says whoever breaks up loses the ring. If the girl breaks up, she should give the engagement ring back. The lesson is clear. Don't try to buy love and don't use gifts and expensive outings to try to get some leverage or control over a girl, to make her feel like she owes you. Do normal things that don't cost much. If the real love is there, you can spend more money on it. People doing desperate, Extreme things for what they call love is the providence of phony movies and naive young people simply because wise people know that there are no great chasms of differences among good quality people in general. If one is not completely in love with you, it's no big deal. You still have you and life goes on. There will be another nice person around in a week or a month or so. With young people, 
it seems so desperate at times. They think they can't live without this one particular person which is stupid. There are plenty of possible lovers in the world for all of us. Don't get so hooked on trying to get with one particular person such that if you don't, you'll be crushed. The easiest way to get over failed love is to find somebody else. You can't force anyone to love you so as soon as you get a couple of rejections from any one particular person, get over it. Move on. Relationships take time to build. Even if you have a nice first date, it doesn't automatically mean you make the leap to marriage right away. Divorcees and single parents are often very impatient. They want a commitment right away. When you hound a man too much in the name of love, his natural instinct is to run away. Give a guy some space. If he really likes you, he will make it happen in his own due time. Don't rush it. If you really like a guy, don't call him every day. Just be nice and pleasant when he takes you out on dates. Don't talk about how screwed up you are, what bad breaks you've had, how everybody screwed you, how you were abused as a kid, etc. Focus on your positive aspects. Make it clear through your actions that you are perfectly fine, happy, and fulfilled as a single but you would like to get married to the right person. Don't talk about marriage too much. Let it come up on its own. Don't rush the relationship. It has to build up to marriage mutually. Immature and even mature lovers want reassurance that they are really loved so they will play games. They will pull back, maybe flirt with someone in front of their new beau, act nonchalant, etc., all in an effort to try to get a read on whether this person really loves them. We are always asking ourselves the following question about our lover. Does he or she really love me with all his or her heart? Most relationships go through some period of rejection or crisis when the loving vibe is lost. These situations are good because they give you a chance to think it through enough to decide whether you will continue on or break it off. Some of them are manufactured by the players to give each of you a chance, on a subconscious level to reassess the relationship then decide to either both move forward or one or both back off and stop it right there. Don't expect perfection in anyone. We are all human beings with very human foibles and faults. We are all territorial. Self-centeredness is our true nature. Resist your true nature enough to open up and be kind to your lover. You must match your lover's kindness and niceness to you. If he buys you something, takes you out and says nice things to you, you must reciprocate equally in your own way. Keep your eyes open. Don't be blinded by love. If you see bad habits, signs of anger, hate, disloyalty, laziness, sloth, gluttony, pride, weakness, etc., don't dismiss them as something your future spouse can work on. People don't really change who they are. Don't take these negative traits in your lover lightly. Don't get involved with someone you just feel lukewarm for. Find someone who strikes some passion in you. There is always an invisible line of respect and personal space between all people, even among lovers. Married people still must not take liberties with each other. You don't in your lover's face, walk in on someone when a door is closed without knocking, grab body parts, etc. You also must show good manners and courtesy, even if you've been married for 30 years. It never ends. Never take the marriage for granted. Lots of people divorce after 30 years of marriage. A man should open doors for his wife. The wife shouldn't jump on her husband with her problems when he walks in the door after a day of work. Physical look is only skin deep. It can only take a relationship so far and everybody ages. If you plan to marry someone, you must marry them for more than look because you must be aware that their looks will fade in 10 years but you will still be married to them. A lot of guys don't seem to realize this which is why there is a glut of them divorcing their wives in their mid-40s and marrying younger women. Don't commit the most common sin of all and potentially the greatest destroyer of marriages, pride. If you really love your spouse, you would be willing to swallow your pride and give her the benefit of the doubt when things aren't going so hot. Don't be down on yourself if you haven't met a mate yet. Keep living and enjoying your life then someday when you least expect it, you'll meet someone.
A marriage is a contract. When people typically make up a business contract, they do what is called due diligence or crossing all their T's and dotting all their I's. They do a lot of advanced research before they sign the contract. There is a meeting of the minds. With a lot of marriages, there is no meeting of the minds as to what the players expect of each other in the future. All reason goes out the window. They think they have good intentions and that's good enough but everybody thinks they have good intentions. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions are worthless when dealing with emotionally weak people who don't have strong identities which is most people because when adversity hits, they go to pieces and often lash out at the one they supposedly love. It happens all the time with regular people. They get married with stars in their eyes then when the honeymoon wears off and their real selves come out, watch out for divorce city. Know the person you're marrying and their expectations of you before you commit. Refer to my love questions checklists elsewhere in this book. There has to be some kind of sexual chemistry and also respect. You can't demand sex whenever you feel like it nor try to avoid it because you don't like it. There has to be a middle ground healthy balance of sex and romance in the relationship. The Mating Game 9 You shouldn't look for a mate unless you really want one. A lot of people are happy single but go out on dates because they feel pressure by society and their friends and family to pair up. Dating is not much fun which is why you shouldn't date anyone unless you feel right at the start that this person is someone you could possibly be happy with. It's competitive out there if you're on the hunt. You have to FO whatever you can to make yourself look better than your competition, not just physically but you have to be a highly endearing person. Women have it so much harder than men because they can only have babies until about 40 and they age much less gracefully than men. A woman's value is her looks. A guy's value can be money, brains, and rugged good looks that get better with age. Women beat themselves up much more about being single than men do. You have to relax, accept what comes and don't worry about it. There are almost no perfectly wonderful men anywhere for two major reasons. Men have to work to both earn a living and to achieve something as an invisible standard society has brainwashed men into. Most play this game thus destroying the other parts of their lives. Many men are brainwashed by society's definition of what it is to be a man so they're a bunch of macho mooks, doing what they can to imitate the stereotypes they see on TV about cool, masculine, tough men all at the expense of romance and love. Men are noncommittal in love much more than women. It's like they want their monogamous relationship in one room then want the freedom to do whatever they want. Don't underestimate men. Just be careful before you jump into a relationship. A lot of guys are not what they seem. Guys have the same emotional depth as women. Find a guy who's not afraid to show it. Be real about who you are. Based on that, look for a mate there. Simply go where your natural interests lie. If you go on the internet, be honest in the ads you place. You have to work at it if you're really looking for love. I don't like blind dates but if you're open to them, why not? Go where the opposite sex hangs out. Date somebody who you intuitively feel is in your league, who has the same socioeconomic status and had the same type of upbringing. Never play hard to get. Be open and receptive as you're interested. Give people second chances. Don't go hard on them unless it's rude behavior. You can only get in trouble if you talk too much. Less talk is always good. You keep some mystique there. Don't waste time on dates where there is no love connection. Cut it off. It's better for the two of you. Be nice. Nice people get second dates. If you're out with a creepy guy, focus on your safety first. Don't try too hard on a first date. Don't overdress or go extreme on the makeover bit. Don't be too stressed waiting for the phone call after a good date. Whatever he does is final. Get on with your life regardless of whether you get the phone call or not. A person can't do anything about their looks so don't judge them harshly based on this but there is no excuse for bad manners. The worst thing is to come on too strong too fast. Guys feel smothered. Let him know you like him but don't go from third date to planning the wedding. 
girls have way too high expectations for men. Slow down a bit. Live in the real world. Most guys aren't Adonises and they aren't vital sexually. Working out in the real world takes its toll on most of them. Don't use past dating experiences as a guide to future people you meet. Don't get jaded. Be open-minded to new people you meet. Don't always be looking at what you want. Look at what you have to offer. The Mating Game 10 You will find love when you least expect it. Be an attractive person who attracts people because of who you are. Ask yourself why you want to get married and write it out. After you do this, look it over to see if it's for the right reasons of love not just to find a provider, to have someone around because you feel lonely or to be rescued out of a bad situation. Do you really want to get married or are you just doing it because your society expects it of you? What do you have to offer to a prospective mate? Are you a good deal or bargain basement trailer? Trash. What kind of person would you want to be with? What does he or she look like? Where do you think you can go to meet the kind of person you want? In order to find a lover, you have to really want love. You have to love yourself enough to be honest with whoever you meet and show them the real you not the fake person manufactured by the media you want them to think you are, cool and trendy as they say. You have to be happy with who you are and not feel inferior because you don't look like all them. Airbrushed, super thin girls in frivolous women's magazines. Feel as though you're already married but just haven't found your mate yet. Have that kind of calmness that people will be attracted to because they will think you will be a great mate and great parent for their children. Don't have unrealistic expectations nor expect someone perfect. You can't plan love but maximize your chances for it both in meeting somebody and being ready when they appear. If you're searching for love, sure go for the fireworks on first eye contact but make a friend. First, if the attraction is naturally there, the love will come in due time. Whenever a date doesn't lead to love, don't see it as a failure on your part, see it as a good experience because you now know you weren't meant to be with that person and know a little bit more about the type of person you're looking for. If you don't feel right about someone, can it now before it gets any deeper? Don't expect perfection. If someone is mostly there in your attraction to each other and desire to have children, don't necessarily reject them because they're not perfect. It's hard enough to find a heart of gold so if you find a heart of silver don't necessarily throw him out. I always see guys and girls alike with way too high expectations and they're just ordinary people with too much ego so slow down a bit, get real. Unless you're a prize for real, expect a mirror. Image of who you are. Love at first sight is great and it happens. Sometimes that two people are so enamored with each other right from the start that their love grows smoothly and quickly but with most people, it takes effort to get to a full-fledged relationship and work the kinks out in the process so be ready to give full effort in your attempts to find true love. Be willing to say hello to someone you don't know who you're attracted to. We're all conditioned to mind our own business out in public and even avoid eye contact because it's looked upon as an invasion of their space if you look for longer than cursory glance but if you're looking for love, you have to look at other faces. And if you see someone you like, you have to make a sociable move. Make light, sociable conversation. If it feels right, make a date or suggest an exchange of phone numbers. If not, just move on. Look at it as just another innocuous conversation as if with some same-sex stranger you meet on the street somewhere. Even though sex is great, get to know the person for who they are before you have sex with them. This is the best way to go with a potentially serious relationship, to not let sex interfere with 
the process of getting to know each other as good friends. Be ready for the possibility that you might never find a good mate. If you think it through and realize you will still be a fine, full human being, it will give you more strength in living your life. People who are desperate, particularly women. Over 30, give off the desperate vibe so strongly. That men sense it and run away. If you can get past seeing all men as prospects to grill upon meeting them and flirt too strongly to just look at them as people you want to be friends with, you might give off a better vibe which will make men more attracted to you. Love yourself, believe in yourself, know that. You're intrinsically good and believe that there's a nice person out there for you if you're willing to do your part to get out there and meet people. Chapter 2 A Courtship Essay Guide 2 The Mating Game 11 Love is the goal of most people's lives. A lot of art is dedicated to love and the pursuit of it. There is no easy way to find love or be in love. To me, it's all instinct. You either feel it or you don't. You can spend your whole life looking for love or luck out and find a special love while you're young. There's no rhyme nor reason to it. One thing for sure is that settling for someone because you're lonely won't solve your problem. It has to feel right otherwise you're screwed. Finding love is not like succeeding in business but you wouldn't know this by looking at all the formulaic books out there that gives you rules and instructions on how to find someone to marry in 90 days or so. The only certain thing is that you have to go out and socialize. If you don't, you'll never meet anybody. I don't particularly think the internet is as good as real life but it's better than nothing. Love is an investment. Do your research before you invest. The best way to see what he's really like is to go on camping trip that lasts at least three days. Don't try for somebody you feel is out of your league. Make sure you got it together before you go looking for love. Try to be a good person or at least give of an aura that you're decent and not a scuzz. By scuzz, I mean that lower class look with long stringy hair, either too fat or too skinny, someone who doesn't take care of themselves. Don't talk about negative things on a date. Be positive and upbeat. Don't whine. Don't be rude. Don't waste time on maybes. Only go after someone if they make you feel alive. You have to feel like you belong to that person and they to you. You need reciprocity, a roughly equal exchange of commitment to the relationship. The benefit of being in love has to outweigh the cost of being in love. The benefits are friendship, sex, intimacy, material perks, and how you a lover makes you feel. Look for someone at your love of attractiveness. If you're an ulgy rich guy and she's beautiful, attracted to your money, there will be a divorce at some point in time. A strong initial attraction is necessary but after that there has to be reciprocity. You each have to give of each other and constantly raise it up a notch. Love is more intuitive than rational. It's more about what you feel in your heart than some checklist you have or some compatibility test you took. All women want an honest, trustworthy, fun man who are stable. Speak with confidence. Say the right words to make her feel good about herself. Be capable of having an interesting, intelligent conversation. Most women love to be in the company of men who can make them laugh and bring excitement to their lives. A woman wants a man who can romance her and make her feel special for her mind and soul as well as her looks. Are you emotionally open to a relationship? Some people have past baggage or they're just messed up people. Good mates are good friends. The fantasy in your mind rarely matches the reality. Some people have interests that are stronger than romantic love. This could be anything like work, drugs, booze, video games, religion, etc. Don't commit unless you really love the person. If you have a close opposite sex friend or you go out with your brother or sister, tell people you're just friends or brother and sister. Split up and flirt on your own. End any relationship that's not hot. Don't feel lonely without a mate. Live a great life. People can sense if you're happy. They want to mate with those kinds of people. If you're a workaholic or an artist, don't show it too much at the beginning of a relationship. If you have had your heart broken, 
you can't be shy if you want love. You have to have some faith in people and try again. What does your lover do for you? How does her presence cramp your style? What does she cost you? To be in a relationship, you have to show love. The harder you work, the better the relationship. The uglier, more insecure, and less your lover has going on, the more he or she will be dependent on you. It is hard for anyone to admit that they have made a mistake which is why a lot of the wrong people get married. This is why I say cut it off as soon as you know you're not with your soulmate. This is the biggest rule of all that almost nobody follows but the best thing is always to cut off a relationship when you know you ain't with the love of your life because it will free you up to be ready when you find your soulmate. Beyond physical attractiveness, probably the most salient thing people like is if their lovers help them in their lives. The less similar a couple is the more likely they are to split up. Don't pursue people very different from you. Be clean, neat and polite. Intelligence is valued only by people who need Intellectual stimulation People generally like people who like them. Shy people usually lose out because no one will wait forever. Compliments and flattery are only good if you're sincere and don't overdo it. The Mating Game 12 True love is based on commitment, intimacy, and passion. You need all three. Think twice before you're a fool for love. Don't write an extreme love letter because someday you might regret it when you fall out of love. Never assume anything in love. Unrequited love is very common. Don't assume that just because you like someone, they like you back. Once you get past the initial attraction, talk and do things together to see how it goes. Be honest with yourself about how you would feel if you weren't so love struck. Many loves start out as infatuation but you have to invest yourself emotionally then see how the sex goes. Find people who think like you for your love and sex needs. Just talk to someone for two or more minutes. You know where someone's head is at very quickly. Most girls over 27 only want to have sex in a committed, monogamous, loving relationship. Some younger girls are open to try out different lovers but many aren't. They want one guy only. In today's world, it's dangerous to sleep around with strangers. People get killed that way. Meet as many people as you can in school, college, at work, through friends, or family, at a club, activity, church, through a personal ad, dating service, at a bar or party or on the street. Look for someone with your level of physical looks who thinks like you. If you find someone you like, let the relationship go where it may. It takes time to get to know someone. Go with your instincts. Don't waste time unless you feel it's right. Be open and honest up front. Be sensitive to each other's needs and desires. I see a lot of girls go out with wimpy, unattractive men because there aren't that many handsome, strong men around. If you really feel nothing for a guy's body, don't go out with him because primal attraction is very important. Off the top of your head, write out your idea of a sexy lover. If you like muscular, healthy men, don't waste time with average guys. Go where muscular men are, at gyms, on sports fields. If you talk to someone X number of times and their stories are a little different here and there, you could be with a chronic liar. Lying by itself is not a big deal because very body does it but if someone is always doing it, it could mean they can't be trusted. The more dissimilar you are with your lover, the more emotionally draining it will be and the more you'll have to compromise. Find someone who thinks and lives like you. If you fight, try to resolve them quickly. Avoid people with serious emotional problems who are also weak and scatterbrained. There are a lot of unfocused people around. Being in a relationship with someone who is less than your soulmate detracts from the opportunity to seek out a true soulmate so don't stay with anyone unless you love them if you want true love. Don't commit until you find true love. People put different values on romantic love. It goes from low to high. Men generally value it lower than women. The less baggage someone has, the easier it is to fall in love. You have to get something out of a relationship. 
you have to commit when your lover is not being loving but you have to feel like you're getting something out of it. People break up all the time because they're not getting what they want. As soon as someone out there offers them more, they're gone. Don't test your lover by playing hard to get. If someone plays games with me, I'm gone. The world is screwed up enough. I don't my lover to start playing games with me. Always be loving and helping. Make others fall in love with you by being loving. Don't disrespect him or her. Ignore rejection in your search for love. Commit to the relationship. The Mating Game 13 Some cynical but wise person said the best relationship is when you get the most love for the least amount of effort put out. They forget one thing though, true love. I can go out and meet an unattractive girl without much going on in her life and she can give me a lot of love for bringing her into my home and taking care of her basic practical needs but it's still not love because I'm not really attracted to her. I don't care what anybody says. I just finished reading an academic book on love with 15 pages of a bibliography and it's like so what? This poor schmuck dedicated a lot of energy to writing this book but he missed the biggest point, love is not scientific it never will be. It has an elusive undefinable character to it. I got this mental image of this guy as some nerdy looking academic who just doesn't get it because he analyzed it all the death and in doing so he took the soul out of it. So much for that book. He made a few statements that made some sense but overall he just couldn't say that love is more intuitive than rational. True love is the love you share with your soulmate. A soulmate is someone similar to you therefore it is unlikely that your soulmate lives in a different culture or different country. Your soulmate is someone raised the same way you were who thinks alike, has the same level of attraction and beauty as you and was probably raised in the same socio-economic class as you were. Your soulmate is somebody who lives in the same city or area you do and likes to do the same things you like to do. Studies show that the majority of people never marry soulmates. The statistics show that 50% of first marriages end in separation or divorce within 20 years. Of those that stay together, many are in passionless marriages of convenience, it's harder to break up than stay together, and some are sexless friends. Establish a strong sense of rapport and keep talking to her like this every day. Find out through conversation what is important to her and help her realize these things. Help her open her mind up to the realm of possibilities in life by giving her a copy of my book A Free Spirit's Search for Enlightenment. Tell her that's your philosophy and that's the kind of girl you're looking for, open to life. Let her know you're all about a shared future together. If you love someone, show them by doing things and saying nice things to them. Support your lover in what he or she wants to do. If they stumble and fall, help them, encourage them. Be there emotionally. That's what friends and lovers are for. When you're in a bad mood, don't take it out on your lover. If you're religious, all leaders of all religions say it's much simpler to be with someone with similar beliefs than with a non-believer. If you really love someone and they're religious but you're not, it would mean a lot if you went to the worship center with this person and eventually convert. Be relaxed. People prefer to be around relaxed people. Fall in love for love, not because you feel lonely. A lot of people get into relationships for reasons other than love. Try to determine if your lover loves you or if they're using you for another reason like a roof over their head. Don't try to force anything. Just go along. If she plays games or wants to leave you, let her. You can't force people to love you. They either do it of their own free will or not all. I read a manipulative book which was about a bunch of tactics to use to get someone to fall in love with you faster. One of them was separate your loved one from her family. Make them hate you so it seems like you're Romeo and Juliet together against the world. This is ridiculous thinking. Love is either natural or it's nothing. The more of a personal loser you are, the more desperate you will be looking for someone to change your life but you could be such a loser that you're ashamed of yourself therefore don't put yourself out there. Love has a cost, you need to spend time, money, and energy to romance your lover. Everybody is faking it to some extent.
be casual but be in the lookout for red flags or real indicators of a person's true nature. Nobody tries to show anger and bitterness but a lot of people are underneath their armor. Playing hard to get will not work on people. Who respect themselves. They just say screw that person and move on while players and clingers try to hang on. As soon as you know there is no love connection, get out. If you're getting serious about someone, do a public record search on them. Subtly try to learn about your lover through her friends and family. The Mating Game 14 Open your heart. Be yourself. Try to make everybody feel love. Loss of hope that they will meet a great soulmate is the reason many people over 30 get depressed about being alone. Some people don't need a soulmate but for the ones that do, they spend too much time thinking about it rather than just living for whatever joy there is regardless of whether they're single or in love. Don't live in the past or the future. Focus on the present. You are a prisoner of your past until you forget about it. The movie Under the Tuscan Sun gives weak people hope for love. The bottom line is to focus on being happy by discovering your true nature then honoring it by releasing most of your natural energy every day. This is the only way to attract soulmates to you. All the primping and pretense is still nothing next to someone who senses that you have a beautiful soul with some natural joy in your life. The way to attract love in your life is to get out there, meet people and take leaps of faith. Chances are you probably will be hurt in your search for love but it's just like life, the journey is the prize. It doesn't really matter what they say about winning and losing. I once met up with a con artist. That's what he was through and through. There was no doubt about it but he told me he did the exact same things all smart, manipulative women have been doing to men since the beginning of time. Even if you're not attracted to someone, all you have to do within the first five minutes of meeting them is to seduce them, to simply act like the lightning of love struck you, act like you're irresistibly attracted to them, that you love them with all your heart that it's destiny that you two be together forever. He said he never married most women, although he married a few of them. He picked slightly older, over 35 year olds, who looked lonely and single but dressed well meaning they had at least some money. Most kept him for a while. He posed as an artist acting as though he was so profound that he didn't have time to work a regular job. Some he married and cleaned out as much as he could. What he did was not ethical but his technique was true. If you want to get somebody, act like you really, really love them. Show them you're heavily interested in them. Compliment them unceasingly. The real winner is the one who tries and comes up short again and again but the point is, as Rudyard Kipling says in his poem if, he or she are the warriors in the arena of life not one of the huddled masses who knows neither victory nor defeat because they stay at one mundane level all their lives. It's the same with love. If you meet someone that looks nice on the outside, there is always a 50 to 50 chance that they are not the person you think they are. You won't know unless you go out with them. It works the same way the other way around. If you come across someone who seems alright but you're not dazzlingly attracted to them, they might be a really great person once you get to know them. You have to make moves and go out on dates if you're looking for love. It's like a roulette wheel. It will land on a bunch of different numbers before it lands on yours. You get what you deserve. You get what you pay for in effort. Don't go out looking for a mate. Become the person you want to meet and when they see someone like them, they'll be attracted to you like moths to a flame. There was a sign for a seminar entitled How to Attract a Mate or something like that at our local university hosted by someone identifying themselves as a member of the Baha'i religion so I went and an older, plain looking, overweight lady came out, seemed calm with herself and didn't seem to be phased by the thought most of us had that she didn't fit the part. She looked like the friendly, safe type not the hot bombshell you'd think would have the looks and the experience with the opposite sex to know what works in attracting a mate. Nevertheless she said she was happily married, just recently in fact, in the previous three years so my take on it was that she was this pleasant, low-key, easy person to talk to who befriended some guy at the vet clinic where she worked and when he kept calling her back for help with his pets, she almost let him get away because she didn't pick up on the signals he was sending her that he was interested. 
she had him pegged as a low-key customer social friend at the clinic and didn't realize he was interested in her until they talked for three hours one night then went out that Friday and got married shortly thereafter. The thing that got me about her was that she would not be considered attractive on the outside by anyone's standards yet she had this guy interested in her because I presume she was so easy and comfortable to talk to. It seems as though everyone needs someone to talk to that they feel comfortable with, men and women alike. This could be why internet chat rooms are so popular. I expected a self-deprecating speech telling us how she, an over 45-year-old, overweight, rather plain-looking girl who looked sincere in a plain way still managed to find love despite all these strikes against her in a society that values thinness, youth, and beauty especially in women looking for a mate but she barely mentioned it throughout her speech except to say be happy with who you are physically. Unless you feel good about your body, you won't have the confidence to attract a mate. The following points are the notes I took during her lecture. Choose your life and live by it. Be a genuinely loving person. A personal connection is the catalyst for love which is why you must be open, friendly, involved with life in the community, be approachable, approach people, be easy to talk to and give off a vibe that says you're honest and nice. Should you take what you can get or have high expectations and reject anyone who doesn't feel at least 90% right outright? Some people, especially as they age, get so desperate they will pretty well take anybody reasonable that comes along and not get true love while others have such high standards that they reject just about everybody they come across. There's a certain kind of aura or karma an individual gives off when they're a nice person looking for love. A cold-hearted person, even if looking for love, will not give off this vibe. It's a quiet self-assurance within your own identity coupled with a positive intention that you're open to falling in love with the right person. Many men and women think that they're warm-hearted and think they're giving off this vibe but in truth they come off like arrogant, snotty elitists which other people sense and stay away. Most people think they're warm and friendly but they come off too trendy and frivolous to be perceived as genuinely nice, humble, unpretentious people. This is what I see a lot of with the capitalist, pop culture vibe of North America. Why do all these so-called trendy people have to be so loud and act like they know everything about the latest, cool, happening things? I am contrarian to all this. To me, the more advanced and trendy a person comes off as opposed to being just the essence of who they are as people especially right after I meet them, the more I turn off. I like someone a bit more relaxed, a bit quieter, someone who doesn't have a need to advertise themselves like a fast-paced TV commercial. Examine yourself. Why haven't you found love so far? Be honest. Do you really want love? Some people say they do but really don't. They would rather be alone but feel they should pay lip service to the search for love in order to conform to society's expectations of them. It could be baggage from your past. You're just not ready to go out looking for love right now. It could be something about your attitude like vanity, arrogance, bitchiness, or elitism. It could be your physical look. You have to try to look reasonably nice without being trendy or frivolous. Put your best foot forward. Everybody tries to be the best they can be when they see someone they like and want to meet. Try to be like this all the time. Somebody might be attracted to you when you least expect it. If you want love, you must be love. You can be love with your pets, friends, relatives and other people you come across. It's good practice to be loving like this when your romantic love finally comes along. Don't put love in a super perfect, transcendent, solve all your problems in life category. Love is almost never perfect. Take the good with the warts. Be realistic about what love is and what it can do to enhance your life. Don't have such high expectations that you'll never reach them then fall into a depression. Love will just make you feel a bit more human. It might be fireworks as it is for some but most of us will not get the great, transcendent love we really want because we're just ordinary people who don't live these great, inspired, bohemian rhapsody lives so we'll get an ordinary person like us that will be mild on the intensity scale of love. Very few people get strong loves where they feel like they're being swept away on a cloud. 
It looks great in movies but it just doesn't happen much in real life. Just decide on the kind of person you want and start hanging out in places where that type of person is likely to go. If you work at a supermarket, you get access to just about every type of person out there. The Mating Game 15 Be graceful and grateful for your life and the love should come. It's not about projecting some image of the smart, successful person. It's about being relaxed, fun, likable. Some loves happen because of first sight enchantment but most start because of friendship. There aren't many people of either gender that are so physically beautiful that they're captivating. If they are, it's gone by 35. It's not about scientific psychobabble like all them dating websites claim with their compatibility tests. It's about two people physically attracted to each other who feel they have a common mind, common ground or common souls, two people who feel they think alike. The only hard and fast rule is that you get out there to be around people. When you see someone you're attracted to and they seem attracted to you, make your move. Internet dating by itself without seeing someone in the flesh wastes a lot of time because a live meeting in the flesh is easily worth three months of email correspondence. It's all in one look. We have this intuition built into us. Some people turn us on, some people don't. One thing I especially don't like in the modern world is the girl who went to college, got a professional job and now has a wardrobe of fashionable clothes and thinks she's a great catch but she's missing one thing. She's cold, clinical, analytical. She thinks her love resume is great but guys are looking for a fun, soft friend not some successful chick with a yuppie career. People like people who give them things. It could be money, stuff, attention, friendship, compliments, adoration, love. You have to give people stuff if you want love. People don't like people who burden them and wear them down. Nobody likes a winner, someone bossy, somebody vain or somebody who always wants you to do things or buy stuff for them. People fall in love with people who they see as a version of themselves. Don't come on too strong right away. If you don't have natural good looks and sex appeal, do the best you can with what you got. You're always trying to be friendly, chatting people up, being good at small talk. Everybody HS dreams or plans. Find out what your target wants then act like it's your dream too. You have to always be interesting, sexy, and erotic. People are attracted to others who appear bohemian, dashing, creative, aesthetically inclined, living for the beauty of life. You have a dream lover buried away in your subconscious mind, your archetype, or from a past life if you believe in that kind of stuff. When you come across Omeon worthy of this image, you go into overload, your brain spews out attraction hormones. After this you meet and talk. If you determine this person is like you and can make you feel good, you will pursue the relationship. Everybody is looking for someone warm-hearted. Women want a guy who's not greasy, sleazy, punky, who dresses like a generic, middle-class guy and has a steady job. Guys want a girl who lives in the real world and is not massively brainwashed by fashion and pop culture. Everybody looks for someone with nice eyes that are warm and inviting. When you talk to a potential lover, look straight at them and let your eyes linger for an extra second after they finish. If someone looks at you a lot or you find yourself looking at someone a lot, it means attraction. When you see someone you like, the longer you wait to make a move, the lower your chances. Women don't want gutless wimps. They want someone who makes a move now. Make eye contact, smile, and give a little nod. If she smiles back, say hi. If a girl likes you, it doesn't matter what you say as long as it's not arrogant or you talk her ear off with meaningless bullshit. You have to be cool and subtle, not slick. Just do enough to make a date or get a phone number. Female proceptivity in the animal kingdom is the female telling the male she's horny by getting close to him, smiling and showing him her genitals. You have to give off attraction signals. Look at him while you caress your hair or smack your lips. Smile. Jut your tits out. If you're on the street, smile and gesture for some man to come over, most will. 
playing hard to get is really stupid. To me, it's vanity or arrogance. That's all I need in my quest for love. All in all, most relationships and marriages aren't based on love. The girl is looking for a steady provider type. The guy is looking for someone attractive to have sex and be friends with. Most of us never find someone that rocks our world. We find somebody who will do, who is alright but not a great specimen of humanity so I say relax. When you feel ready for love, put the signals out and you'll attract a generic, average person that's something like you. A lot of the special people in terms of someone with real talent in something either end up alone or married to someone who's a minor character next to their work so don't get all balled up about looking for love. You'll find some ordinary person and that will be good enough because that's the real world not the world according to some phony love movie. The Mating Game 16 Love is a gift from the gods. They give it to you when they see you're worthy of it. First off, be nice, unassuming, humble and pleasant. Give off the vibe that you're a good person interested in falling in love with the right person. You do this by being down to earth and friendly. Have a belief that you will find love at some point in time. Be patient about it, not desperate. People can sense desperation and run away from it. Open yourself up to life. Make yourself available by being open, friendly, and going out in public to increase your exposure to people in general and possibly a chance encounter with a lover. There is no way around it. If you don't like using the internet for love which I don't because I believe only in spontaneous physical chemistry in the search for love, you simply have to get out there and be around people. The paradox of it is that when you go out in public, you can't act desperate. It's kinda like I want love but I don't need it. You have to come off as an individual who is enjoying his or her life and is willing to step out and proclaim yourself a single looking for love in a subtle yet definite way. It's kinda like, I'm single, so what? I'm not gonna feel self-conscious about it. I got the guts to get out there and enjoy my life. If I see someone I like, I'll give off the vibe having a good time, wish you were here enjoying it with me. Conversely, somebody might see me and think the same thing about me. The deal is to enjoy your life and do things to facilitate your enjoyment of it which puts you out there around other people. When the chemistry is there, it will happen very quickly. You just have to be out there increasing the chance that it will happen rather than sitting at home on the internet. The easiest way is a high public contact job which I talk about elsewhere. I believe that the chemistry of love just happens. There's nothing you can do about it but if you don't have the guts to make a move or reciprocate the other's move then all is lost. I've read a lot of stories of missed love connections. A guy or a girl sees someone somewhere that rocks their world but they don't act on it in that moment and spend the rest of their life with the image of that glorious person locked away in their heads, cursing themselves when they feel lonely some night thinking they would give anything to meet this person. It happened to me. I have one regret like this. It will never go away. Trust your intuition. I say it's better to be single than be paired off with someone you're not really in love with in a spiritual, soulmate way but don't wait forever. If you come across someone that connects on most cylinders, it might be best to go with it and grow to love each other more like they assume happens in arranged marriages rather than wait for the perfect match which might never happen if this is what you really want. You have to take the time to know the type of person you want both in look and in spirit then go in that direction putting yourself into situations where you could meet this type of person but not be bound by it. Be flexible enough to follow both your practical head and romantic heart in attracting a mate. Be honest with yourself and in the way you live your life. Don't listen to too much advice out there about the love game. Trust yourself in matters of the heart. Give yourself a heart to heart about why you want to fall in love. Look at yourself, determine what you have to offer then show it. You have to make a firm commitment to decide you want love then be true to the task by being a wonderful person and getting out in public to expose yourself to people. Trust yourself. Have faith. Live a good life as an independent person. 
Don't beat yourself up for past failed relationships nor dwell on the fact that you might end up old and single. Simply live an enjoyable life right now so people can see you and get a chance to be attracted to you. Many people selfishly look out at the world and ask themselves what can it do for them. Why not change it around, ask what do you have to offer to the world then work on being that nice, decent, approachable person. Don't be shy about your intentions. Tell people you're single. Act single. Make it known that you're on the hunt and ask people if they know somebody nice they can set you up on a date with. Be honest and sincere but at the same time be assertive in having the guts to go out in public alone acting like a single person interested in meeting other singles for romantic encounters and possible love. Business or work are great covers for this. Work in a field that has high exposure to the general public. Unless you feel comfortable being exactly who you are in a relationship, don't waste your time trying to entice someone with pop culture trendiness and charm because these types of relationships rarely last. Live in a positive bubble of a free, original inspired lifestyle regardless of whether you're single or not. There is no shame in being single. It's cultural brainwash. Culture your own identity. Be happy with it and if love comes around while you're enjoying your life, great. If not, just keep living happily and calmly. Feel good about your physical looks. Don't be an obsessed glamour queen. Simply take care of your health and looks enough to feel comfortable with it. Being attractive is a combination of someone taking care of the looks and body they were endowed with combined with their identity as human beings. The more you know yourself and the more stable you are, generally, the more spiritual, romantic, and aesthetically appealing you will be. People will come onto you with all kinds of motives some of which will be true love all the way to some which will be to use you sexually and any other way they can. Determine true motives. If they're not purely for love at the outset, why bother unless you want a superficial sexual relationship? We're all insecure and fumbling when it comes to romance. Don't take it so hard and try to be more real and down to earth than fake some romantic gesture you saw in a TV show or something like that. Too many guys think they have to make those corny romantic moves. Never ask a girl if you can kiss her. If you feel right, do it anyway come hell or high water. If you're out on a date which is going pretty good, don't ruin it by trying to kiss her in an awkward way. You'll have your chance at the end of the date. If you're having a good time, go with it without making corny romantic moves. You'll know when she wants you to kiss her. She sends the signals. Life is hard for many people. In a highly stressed out world based on career success, people get worn down, lose their spiritual essence which is why you should keep a sense of humor and reassert your spirit by going to church, singing in the choir, dancing freely or anything else that helps you stay light, free and inspired. Relationships could be hard work or could be very easy and flowing if you're with a soulmate. When you find someone, work at being a good partner with love, commitment, and patience. Exude a sense of inspired energy about yourself. Abandon yourself to your unique dance of life. When your soulmate sees you for the first time, they will recognize these qualities about you and this will be what attracts them to you. Have faith that you're a good person living the right life for yourself, that you're using up your natural energy in a way that's right for you. The timing for love has to be right. Many people won't pursue it unless they look a certain way, have a certain amount of money saved up, are doing well in their career, etc. We feel different about romantic love at different points in our lives. Love and marriage are largely cultural conditioning. If you do all the right things and still don't find love, don't despair. Continue to be who you are and live an honorable life. Often, it's only then when we're not looking for it that love hits us out of the blue like a lightning bolt someday when we least expect it. If the object of your affection is not interested, don't push it. Look for someone else. Be a good person. Be friendly. Don't be somebody you're not. Sex by itself is not enough to sustain love. There has to be an emotional connection there. That's the key. Never fall in love so much that it robs you of your personal identity. Get your ego out of it. 
If you meet someone, be nice and be real but also have the sense not to argue over a trivial point just because your ego tells you that you have to be right. Don't feel hopeless about attracting love. Be happy and positive. Accept your life as is and be happy with it. Don't be standoffish. Get out there and circulate. Live in the moment. Don't fall into despair thinking you will end up old and alone. Love your life now regardless of what happens. Get off the fast track. Slow down, enjoy your life and give off that attitude. Enjoy your life. Believe in who you are. Culture a sense of aesthetics, a love for all that is good in life. Don't be a Pollyanna or a glossy phony. Be yourself. Don't overanalyze your life too much, not the past or the future. Believe in your gut instincts about people. Get enough sleep so you feel energetic enough to enjoy your life. Don't work too hard that you burn out. Keep a relaxed balanced flow. The Mating Game 17 A man falls in love through his eyes, a woman through her ears. Make eye contact then say with your eyes, you're so hot, I want to be with you. Asking somebody out is tough enough but the entire courtship process is tough because you can be rejected at any time. This is what's tough about it, the possibility of getting rejected to your face. You can't take it personally. Just look at it in the way that you have to kiss X number of frogs or bitches before you find royalty like in the fairy tales. If somebody rejects you, they weren't meant to be with you in the first place. Look at it as their problem of insecurity, not yours. If you want to score a touchdown of love, you have to look reasonably attractive and go out on dates. If you want a great love at first sight thing, you might have to wait forever so lower your standards a bit to bring people in. All girls want a guy who, when they look across a room and see for the first time, takes their breath away but most guys don't measure up to this romantic ideal. In a nutshell, you first have to make yourself a worthy prize before you bother looking for love then when you feel ready, maximize your chances of meeting a worthy soulmate equal by circulating as much as you can everywhere out in public in order to see people. When you finally see someone you like, you will know in one second. If she knows it too as evident by holding her gaze with you, you should go over and ask her out if you're in a relationship frame of mind because it might be your only chance then she will disappear into the bowels of the world forevermore. When you're out there making the scene and you talk to anyone you're interested in, if he or she doesn't give you any positive body language signals within 5 minutes, move on. People are generally very quick and primal with who they like without even two words spoken. If you see that a girl is attracted to you, all you have to do is not put your foot in your mouth when you talk to her by acting like a neutral, middle class, non-controversial good guy and you're in. When you're attracted to someone that you could develop a relationship with, your body automatically releases all its endorphins, pleasure-producing neurohormones, neurotransmitters dopamine, norepinephrine, oxytocin, serotonin, full blast. This mood and these hormones produce a powerful euphoric feeling which is what single people are looking for when they see a possible new lover for the first time and are around them and also this is the feeling long time couples keep trying to get back to so the solution is simple, do things together that are not specifically sexual or romantic that also cause the release of endorphins, generally activities that are exciting, interesting, slightly dangerous, physical, challenging, breathtaking. Novel sir piercing, etc. You get the rush from the activity plus the rush of the romantic sensual connection between the two of you. This will help you in the courtship dance in getting her to like you more. There's only real rule in the courtship dance, show him or her unabashedly as opposed to subtly that you're very attracted to them. There are millions of ways to do this like continually smile at your quarry, offer to help her, talk with a gentle tone in your voice, look straight into his eyes and hold it or brush your tits up against his back accidentally on purpose. Act like your love for this person is a disease you don't want to get cured of. Don't come on too strong though if it's unrequited. They have to balance out your efforts with their efforts back at you. Typical liking behaviors are the smile, the light touch, the desire to keep a conversation going and offering to help you out in some way. 
Less obvious flirting behaviors are synchronicity which means to mimic who you're with like taking a drink if he takes one, smiling if he smiles, moving in closer if he does, etc. We all know open body language is good. Closed, cramped body language like arms folded and tucked into yourself signals no attraction. The more you stand or sit facing each other head on, the more the attraction. The more at an angle somebody chooses to face you, the less they're attracted to you. The closer somebody is, the more attracted they are to you. The further away they are, the less attracted they are to you. If you're on a date and your date is constantly leaving to go to the bathroom, walk around, etc., rest assured she doesn't want to be with you. Girls and guys attracted to someone take on the typical jutting posture like a proud peacock. They raise their shoulders and jut their chests out, girls to show their breasts, guys to stand tall and show their muscular chests while tucking the gut in. Although I've never seen it myself, some experts I saw on TV doing dating research said one of the highest signs of attraction is while you or your date are sitting down, you subconsciously bend your feet inwards towards each other, kind of like pigeon toed, pointing your toes inward. If you notice your date doing this, it supposedly means she likes you. Outstretched arms or expressing yourself with your hands is a good sign. Some people call it palming when you expose your palms which means you're open and attracted to this person. People can control their scowls with phony smiles but you generally can't fake lip compression which is curling the lips in, kind of like holding back with the lips. If your date does this immediately after meeting you, she's already decided you're not her prince charming. Probably the strangest courtship custom I've ever seen is in modern day Krygistan where guys go around kidnapping girls and marrying them. The mating game 18. First impressions are lasting impressions. The whole deal about attraction is that it's all decided in the first two minutes. Each of you has already made up your minds. It's either yes, no and for some guys, hang on and maybe get sex, for girls, hang on because I'm so desperate for a guy but for intuitive love, all you need is two minutes. Contrary to many romantic movie plots where the players don't really like each other at first but gradually get to love one another, in real life, it's virtually all decided in the first few minutes. Everyone lives on ego. We all have our fragile lone egos which want to be stroked to feel better so if you stroke anyone's ego by sincerely telling them how wonderful, cool and fascinating they are and how much you love them, you make them feel good, inspired, hot and horny then they open up, like you more and maybe even have sex with you because they know you love them so much and you're such a great fun guy or girl to be with. The thing I've found about chicks is that if they like you, it doesn't matter what you say or it doesn't matter if you don't say anything at all. They like you, they want to be around you. It's better to be silent than to be a frivolous big mouth or a know-it-all intellectual snob. Talk less, smile and relax more. Don't waste your time going out with a lot of frogs to find the prince. Find the prince then date him to avoid the hassles of all those silly, stupid dates. If you think a frog might network you into a better date, by all means, go for it. Barring that, hold off a bit, don't go out on dates unless you know for sure that you feel something in your heart for this other person. Conversely, once again I repeat, if you're on a date and there's no spark, don't waste your time. Can it with tact as quickly as possible. Many men have an archaic view that dating is all about spending money then when you spend so much, you get sex and love. Dating is not prostitution, it's romance. Unless she's a gold digger, a girl would rather have a nice, simple picnic than a stupid night at an overpriced restaurant. A girl views the success or failure of the date by how much she feels emotionally connected to you. A lot of girls decide they like you in two seconds so all you have to do is coast but a lot of guys screw it up by acting like big dumb egomaniacs, big superficial macho dummies or intellectually superior advanced human beings. Show her you're cool, that you're tuned into her emotions sensitively then be easy about it. Play good music on your radio, drive coolly, not too fast, not like a maniac then open the car door for her, smile at her, nod at her, 
walk a little bit behind her with a spring in your step kinda like you're humming a great song to yourself, that easy cool attitude, kinda like I don't give a damn about anything. I'm with this nice chick, everything's cool. Romance is honest love with sparkle. It's nothing fancy. You have to give off the vibe that you're super duper attracted to her, she will get the vibe and everything will be fine. Anything less will be fake. People can generally read the real deal versus the plotting effort. Use the first date to establish common ground and the fact that you like him. Don't come on too strong in the romance department too soon. Be upbeat but not a frivolous, out-of-touch sorority girl Poliana who's never been out of her comfort zone. Try to show him you're an interesting person without going overboard or being too phony. Thank him, tell him you had a good time. Don't sit by the phone waiting for him to call even if you like him. If he likes you, he will call in due time. If you really like him, leave something in his car by accident like your extra set of keys, a small purse with nothing much in it, etc. so he has to call you to return it. Take him out for a date. People like to talk about themselves, their interests, their work, local gossip, interesting stories and places, other people, pop culture, people don't like to talk about past relationships, money, raising their children, weight problems, health problems, human weaknesses, personal problems. Dating in general. Fashion, clothing, sounds too frivolous. Negative things. Negative gossip. The reality of mundane day-to-day -day life. Politics. Death. Being fake, i.e., fake hair color, fake boobs, etc. The mating game 19. Fear of rejection plus low self-image equals set up for failure. If you're still on the fence about the search for love, check out your inner self a little more. There may be something inside that stops you from opening up to one special person. If you want love, get off your self-pitying woe is me, couch potato life and do something about it. Just get up off your butt and go. If you don't feel that good about your looks, personality, or body, you won't have the inner charisma to attract a prize so you will settle for somebody average like yourself or maybe give up entirely in the search for love. The solution is to strive to be an interesting, dynamic person who loves life and shows it. In the end, you will get what you deserve. That's the way it works. Nobody's got natural charm. It comes from living an interesting, passionate lifestyle. You can't fake it for very long. It all comes down to the look of ease, calm and joy which reflects the inner soul. Do your eyes sparkle, are your teeth white? Cute gimmicks, fads, clothes, makeup, expensive cars, etc., are useless in the search for true love. The only thing that matters is the beauty in your soul and your sense of the soul of the possible lover when you see them for the first time. Waiting won't get the job done. You need action. You need to give off the vibe that says, I'm a horny, good-looking specimen. If you think you can handle me, bring it on. Take active steps towards your goal by being out around people anywhere. Think it, live it, eat it. You're a babe slash dude magnet. Listen to cool music. If you've got the spark, you can attract people anywhere from the supermarket to church. Most people approach the search for love as a random thing and go to singles clubs and dances hoping to luck out and meet someone nice. Many people are so down on themselves that they pretend to be looking for someone but subconsciously sabotage themselves by setting unrealistic standards or just being all around negative, cynical, complaining winners. There's no magic formula but the vibe is that it's never too late and you gotta keep trying. There's no magical place or time. Guys and girls are everywhere. It's your attitude that counts. If you're scared, just start slow by smiling at girls, then saying hello and striking up a conversation. Most of us want love and for some reason women seem more pressured to be with a man than a man is to be with a woman. Some say it's due to women's lower self-esteem. 
I think a lot of it stems from TV, magazines, soap operas, and the like. They're brainwashing tools. Don't take them too seriously. The facts are that there are 10 million more women in the states than there are men. In Washington DC, New York, and other big cities, women generally outnumber men presumably because they fill all the many clerical and secretarial positions there so you might want to keep that in mind in your quest and try a smaller city where your odds might be better, that is, if you're a woman. But then again, if you're in the least bit active and somewhat assertive, you've got an advantage over 90% of the other women out there. The biological clock works against many women psychologically, leading them to act almost, dare say, desperate. And of course there's that double standard. For instance, it's fine for older men to date younger women but not vice versa. I've read several magazine articles that make it seem almost hopeless for a woman over 30 to get married. It's a bunch of BS. Just be assertive and persistent in your search. Don't despair. There are 5 million marriages every year in the United States. You could easily be one of them as long as you don't mind the statistic that half of them will be divorced within 5 years. But, of course, that won't be you. Of course not. Once you find your man and give him this book to read, you will be all set. There's something within us that subconsciously, instinctively attracts us to people who were like our parents. We subconsciously feel that we finally have another chance to be nurtured and regain that warm, fuzzy feeling of parental love again. It's like you've finally come home all over again. It's deja vu, you feel as though you've known them all your life because they awaken some deep-rooted memories within you left over from childhood. Think about it the next time you fall in love at first sight. The Mating Game 20 one thing that men and women alike complain about is this change that seems to happen to some people after they surrender themselves for the first time in the bedroom. Just let the relationship go on naturally. Don't look at her like she's from outer space like some men do and run away. And don't expect sex every time you're together like some men do. Men don't like women who become dependent too quickly. They want to be needed but not overwhelmed or smothered. Perhaps from some primordial need, men compete with each other for women's favors, so, as I will talk about later, put yourself in a position where they outnumber you. In general, men are often more soppy in a relationship. It's harder to break through but once you do, they're hooked and hopelessly in love. And some so-called experts even say that men are implicitly more faithful but I can't really buy that. Everybody who's single and looking automatically has the radar out. You may have felt yourself getting checked over at some point in time. Someone sees you, they're interested at first sight, they zone in on you and look you over. We all have this automatic judgment system within ourselves which we use to analyze people very quickly, like in about two seconds. Everybody does it. You take whatever you see and make an instantaneous judgment. Without repeating myself too much, everybody is looking for a healthy person with clear skin with a healthy complexion and a 0.7 to 1.0 waist to hip ratio meaning no extra body fat. The psychobiologists say that this is an innate ability, done for the purpose of finding someone who will make good babies but I think it's just good common sense, everybody wants somebody with a healthy, fit body rather than someone with a sickly, unproportioned body so the point is, body and face is everything for first impressions so start exercising. Beyond that, people read you for signs of what you're into. The best rule of thumb is to always dress nicely but don't go overboard, keep a kinda middle class look. Drop all the trendy crap. I was watching a girl being interviewed on TV who I thought was attractive until they did a close up on her and I saw both the nose ring and the eyebrow ring on her face. I thought to myself what an idiot. What's she trying to prove? She's got some kind of ego or identity problems. That kind of stuff that purposely attracts attention to oneself turns off most of the population. It's not cool, it's stupid. It's fine to put some extra makeup on, tighter clothes, etc. when you're on the hunt. Do cute things with your hair. Men like flowers and bows in them. It brings them back to the innocence of childhood. 
of course you have to act like that too. Guys should dress neatly. No more baseball hats. Shave off all the whiskers except for maybe a clean mustache. Smile, wear nice clothes. Grunge slash loose is out. Tighten it up a little. If you've never used cologne before, it's time to buy a bottle. Put a little under the armpits every day. Lose the fat. Muscles don't matter but lose the fat. Consider a three-week stint at a tanning salon. Find a cheap one that's located within a gym. They're cheaper than the tanning-only salons. Brush your teeth twice a day. If you can afford it, consider some cosmetic teeth whitening work. The techniques vary all the way from low-level peroxide to full caps. They've even got laser cleaning now at about $50 a tooth. Whenever you meet a prospect, listen to him when he talks and make him feel like he's a real cool guy. If you're in a wishy-washy, on-off relationship with someone who's a half-assed, non-committal dog, get rid of him or her. If you're hanging out with deadbeat people, same or different sex but particularly, if you're a single woman hanging with negative, scorned single bitches, get rid of them. Time for a real change. You have to find something worthwhile that you enjoy doing. Doesn't matter what it is really but try to find something that you can do in a social scene with others then do it regularly on an ongoing basis. It could be aerobics, working out at the gym, darts, archery, creative writing, singing, playing an instrument, needlepoint then joining a club and going to crafts shows. It could be computer, then you help novices learn, teach your dog to catch a frisbee then do it in the park, play chess and the list goes on. It could be something solitary like woodworking but you should try to find a way to share it with the world, maybe by going to crafts shows or teaching a class in it or even taking classes in it. By finding a passion and pursuing it, you feel better and give off the impression to the world that you're a worthy human being who cares enough about life to actually do something more than the average couch potato Joe average working man. Get off the Prince Charming fantasy. Most of us have this dream person image locked away in our heads and we look around to find someone to fit it. Well, in the real world, people don't fit neatly into your cutie little package fantasy. Don't be a snob. Get off this idea that you're gonna get this razzle dazzle prize and show him off to mom and all your friends because you're so special. If you attract someone who looks successful then show him off like a prize cat, he will feel it and rather than be flattered, he will resent you for using him to serve your purpose. Just like you gotta get off the prince charming fantasy, you gotta get off the charming frog deal even if he's a frog all dressed up to look like a prince, he's still a toad, more specifically, a reptile with no real feelings. If you meet a dud and know he's a dud even though he's a charming, cool acting suavo dud and makes you feel kinda nice with his suavo crapo, tell him to go to hell right away. He's a dud, Nuff said. Don't feel guilty. He's a jerk. He's used to it. The mating game 21. Don't analyze yourself too much. Just keep going. If eight jerks snubbed you when you smiled at them today, it's not your fault. People don't expect strangers to be nice, and when it happens, sometimes they're caught off guard. We live in a closed, cynical, paranoid society, so don't expect miracles. But if you're nice and open, people will generally respond. Control your fear of meeting new people by bringing it down to size. Just say to yourself, So, I get rejected, so what? A red face, an uncomfortable moment then it's lost in the ether forever. The big thing about fear is that it's greatest just before the fact, hence, in your own mind. Once the ball gets rolling, once you make the move, something else takes over, that cool part of you called savoir faire. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Make that move. Keep going because you know that it's the only way it's gonna happen, if you're out there circulating, making moves just being around people, then, when you least expect it, bam, there he is. Be ready. Don't use sex to try to get someone to fall in love with you. Only have sex when you know it's love. If you have sex too soon, you will lose the respect and sanctity of it. 
moving in together is a sign of commitment but if one uses the other to pay bills, etc., it's not love. It's fine to initiate a discussion about marriage to see where the other stands. We commonly think of the woman as the romantic sex but underneath all the fluff, the truth is that women tend to be practical and realistic in their choice of a man. Man chooses a friend, woman chooses a standard of living so, in conclusion, I say that it's the man who falls for the romance as hard or harder than the woman. Tune your radio to a love music station. Buy some love music tapes. Make your own off the radio. Listen to love music all the time. Be a real human being without pretense. Walk like one, think like one, look people in the eye like one, shake hands like one, smile like one. If you're a girl, find a single same-sex friend who's looking for someone to and together team up in your quest. If you're a guy, try to find a buddy to team up with but you will probably end up doing it solo. Don't be ashamed of your single status nor be self-conscious about your quest for a lover. Announce it to the world. Shamelessly tell them all, both through your words and actions, that you're looking for a special babe and ask for blind date setups and suggestions. If you find a possible Mr. Slash Ms. Wright, don't take no until you've absolutely given it your best effort to show availability and he slash she fell flat. Most everybody in their own mind thinks they need people with some advanced, special qualities. Your job as a seducing lover slash potential mate is to unzip the layers of pretense to get at this warm, moist fuzzball of inner beauty and connect with it. There are a lot of controlling men out there but by and large men say they want a woman who can stand up for herself and not take crap from a man. Give any nice person at least two dates because a lot of people are nervous and flustered both the first time you approach them and on the first date. Give him a chance. Praise him. Let him want to blossom for you.